OK, Yvette Cooper, it is your turn, and your question is to uh, Jeremy Corbyn. So it is. So it is. Um, so, Jeremy, so there's issues that we agree on, and uh, Jeremy's trying, you're trying to look for another camera to, to see the, read the question. There are issues that we agree on that we should have, that we should oppose George Osborne's 40% cuts. But the, you know, the issue that I've raised concern with you about is your proposal for the Bank of England to print money to pay for schools or transport. In those circumstances, do you believe that the government would have to pay that money back to the Bank of England, or do you think that this is free money? We put £385 billion worth of money called quantitative easing into the banks to bail them out in 2008. Um, <clears throat> We bought bank shares and put them in a holding company, some of which Osborne is now selling off, and he shouldn't because they're not his to sell, they're ours to keep. And um, my suggestion is that some of that quantitative easing ought to be made available, together with other sources such as government bonds, to fund a national investment bank so that we have a growing economy which can improve the infrastructure in all parts of the UK, particularly the rail infrastructure, also be able to fund the very necessary housing building, particularly council house building that this country desperately is crying out for, and as efficient and effective and inexpensive way of funding public investment rather than the private finance initiatives which have been pursued by both this government and the last government, which are costing so much, so dear, in both the NHS and in education. It's not inflationary. Japan used quantitative easing after 10 years of a flatlining economy in order to boost growth. I would have thought it's a sensible and reasonable precautionary thing to do. But you haven't, an answered, you haven't answered the question. Yes, I have. Because actually, no, you haven't. Because actually, what you're offering people is false hope. For a start, no, quantitative... Absolutely well, let me finish. Not. For a start, quantitative easing has stopped because the economy is now growing. The reason that Japan was able to keep going and doing it for many years is because they went into slump, serious slump yeah. for a long term. Yeah. It's absolutely right to support the economy when it is in crisis and when it is in a mm -hmm. serious recession. But once the economy is growing, if you simply keep printing money at that time, that pushes up inflation. Second thing is that when the Bank of England prints that money, and even through the quantitative easing, it has to still be paid back. So actually, you're still not answered. Are the, is the money for the schools and the hospitals or the transport going to have to be paid back? Because my fear is what you're doing is you are offering people false promise. It sounds brilliant. Everybody claps because everybody wants to see the schools, the hospitals, the infrastructure to be done. But if we are really going to be able to deliver the schools, the hospitals, the transport infrastructure, we've got to be credible enough to properly pay for it. We cannot do that if we yeah. just promise to print money we haven't got. It's dishonest. It's false promise. We've got to offer people real yeah. hope. Are we going to go back to private finance initiative with the 600% um, cost of investment in schools and hospitals? Because that surely is a, a model that has Your failed. Your plan is what like I'm private so, finance well, I'm, on steroids. I'm it not is sure. worse than that. You I'm, want to just put quantitative easing in. I'm you not, are not being straight with people. I'm and that's sure why there's huge numbers of economists um, have said it doesn't stack up. I'm not it's sure not if, fair on people and it will fall apart. And what will we be, the Labour Party, if we go to people with false promises? It's like Nick Clegg before the 2010 election. A whole load of false promises that then fall, fell apart. It's not fair and we will I'm, let people down if we do. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to look at the proposals, and they are proposals that have been put forward and have been supported by a very large number of economists, including Nobel Prize winning economists, who say this is a sensible and reasonable idea that we do a combination of during a period of recession to use quantitative easing, We're during not a in period recession. during a wait a minute, during a period of growth you use government bonds as a way of funding development within our society. The problems we've got, and I repeat it, is that we are funding public services by the sale of assets, by private finance initiative, and we are losing control of those assets, and it's costing a lot of people very dear in cuts that are being made in health and education in order to pay for the voracious appetite cuts, of these private the finance money? companies that if have taken things the, over. If you ditch the printing money... If you ditch the printing money, 
we could set out a credible alternative. That means we don't have to do George Osborne's 40%. The problem is, if all you promise is something that won't stack up, you will let the Tories get away with this. You will let the Tories be able to get away with their 40% cuts to our public services. I think that would be devastating. It's an ideology of austerity that will rip apart our public services and it will hugely undermine our economy. But if we're really going to stand up to them, we've got to be strong enough and credible enough to do it, not just pretend that money will come out of thin air by printing it. Let's have a strong real I'm alternative. That you we should work together on Yvette, doing that, but you're not doing so because you're Yvette, offering people Yvette, false hope I'm instead. I'm very pleased that you accept that the politics of austerity is one of the problems we face. We went into the last election promising cuts. We went into the 2010 election promising cuts. Are we going to go into a 2020 election because Osborne will not have balanced the books by that stage saying, well, an incoming Labour government, the first thing we've got to do is make more cuts in order to make ourselves credible. I say invest to grow. Yes, you can't no, cut your way to prosperity. Well, I'm afraid that on that note, our time is up. Uh,